from viewing it, it looks like the trainer is just giving it the, what is this, like the mill? What would you call this, this type of jerking motion? It's like the, you know, those oil pumps that go up and down all throughout the fields in Texas. And, but that's how he's being jerked off. It's the Sway Parade with Chuck Sway. Welcome into the Sway Parade. My name is Chuck Sway, and this <laughs> is the parade. Thank you for joining me on another week of the program. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, aside from listening to the show, just take a second. This is all that I ask of you, and this is really all that the almighty algorithm asks of you, is to just leave a review. Whatever platform you're consuming the parade on, leave a review, thumbs up, subscribe, do all of that. If it prompts you for a star rating, I'm not saying give it five stars. I'm saying give it any star because all of that is offerings to the almighty algorithm. And I'll be praying to the almighty algorithm at the bottom of the show. But that's a ways out. We got a lot to get through this week. Just a quick breakdown of the show if you are brand new. Cover news, cover sports, cover clips in a parade-like fashion. It's fun. It's a good time. Yeah. And there is a hotline that you can call. I like to start off the show when there are callers to see what's going on on that hotline. And before I play this week's caller, reminder of that number. If you're watching on YouTube, it's right there on the screen. If you're listening, take a mental note, grab a pen and paper, 818 275 Sway, 818-275-7929. You call that number, this is how it works. You call the number, you leave any sort of message. I mean, whatever you want. A nice little story, a fun joke, uh, a question for me. All of it is wide open. And I don't listen to these calls until this very moment. So just keep that in mind. Whatever you are bringing to the table, it's it's a blind reaction. So without further ado, let's listen to this week's caller. Hey there, Chuck. Just really dying to know, uh, how many 75-year-old men do you think you could take down if you guys were in an octagon and everyone was naked? and covered in peanut butter. Let me know, dying to know how you would fare against these peanut butter covered old gentlemen. Thanks, Chuck. Bye. Excellent question, caller. This is uh, starting to be a bit thematic. A couple weeks ago, there was the question of how many five-year-olds. Now the question is, how many 75-year-olds in the octagon, naked and covered in peanut butter? Now, at 75 years old, just in general, there's a good chunk of that population that probably is regularly naked and covered in peanut butter. Maybe not in the octagon, but when you get up in age, you start to get senile. Uh, clothes might be boring. Yeah, I don't want to wear this. And so then favorite treat might be peanut butter because you're all your teeth have fallen out and it's just easy to just kind of suck on. So the setting seems appropriate. 75 might be a little young for some people, but here's the thing. If I make it to 75 years old and I don't want to, I want to be gone at least 25 years before that. But if I make it there, I probably will be in this camp of like, I don't like my clothes, but I do like peanut butter. Get that over here. I want to suck on it. <laughs> so if I'm put in an octagon, similar to just regular five-year-olds with no, no peanut butter, how many could I take on at 75 years old? Uh, I think that the older we get with these demographics of, of oppositions, I think it gets easier. Uh, I said, what was it? 15 for the five-year-olds. I'm going to go with, Oh, 50 plus give me 50 to 75. My goal would be 75. If I can take out 75, 75 year old men, naked in peanut butter in the octagon. Uh, I, I think it's achievable. The only question I have 
the logistics of it all is when one 75 year old naked peanut butter man goes down, is there ring attendants that come and just drag his now lifeless body through the peanut butter and out of the octagon? Because if not, the octagon is going to fill up with a bunch of old and creamy men. And, and that might be a problem because I'm going to expel energy to be like, oh, oh, hold on. I'll just, you know, give a nice little hook to, to one of them that's still up. And then I'll just grab and drag the ones that are down and just kind of pile them up in the corner. Uh, I, I'm going to go for 75. Now, I know, you know, you have to respect your elders, but this world is a young person's world. And no matter what that 75 year old experienced in life. Uh, whether they were just a grew up on the hard streets and they were scrappy, all that 75 years will take its toll on you no matter what, in most cases, unless you can afford to get baby blood transfused into you and you stay young. But I'm just going to assume that the majority of these 75 year olds uh, are not, they're not like that. And also if you can find, because my goal, 75, 75 year old naked men covered in peanut butter. If you find suitors for this bout, I feel like these men are going to be like, well, one more fun thing. And I, I think I'm done. I mean, <laughs> you're going to, you're going to go up to them, whoever the promoters are or the recruiters going to nursing homes and be like, oh, Mr. Johnson. I have a special proposition for you. It's like the scene in Squid Games. When they're going around, they're just finding people that are desperate. In this case, they're just finding people that are like, hey, we'd like to make some money on you, and it could be a good time. You like peanut butter? Well, then come on down to the ring. So the majority of these 75-year-old men naked covered in peanut butter probably have a, not necessarily a death wish, but they probably wish to be dead. Uh, and... In this situation, I will happily oblige because I am protecting myself as well. So there's my number, caller. It's an excellent question. I'm going to say 75. Uh, I, I think even I, I I didn't sell myself short with the five year olds, but I took into account like I'm I'm out of shape, very bad. I'm down bad with my physique, but I'm not like a 75 year old, not yet. So, yeah, 75. If you think you can do more, if you think you can do less, if I left out some super pressing details that I have not considered, let me know. Call that number, 818-275-SWAY. Weigh, on it, weigh in on it. <laughs> weigh in on it. Or if you have a, another scenario in this how many blanks can be fought, call that in as well. That number if you're watching on YouTube, it's been on the bottom of the screen the whole time. If you're listening, 818-275-SWAY. And with that, we are moving on, chugging along on the deep shot, and we are going to get into scrubbing some clips. Scrub my clip. Yeah, it's that time of the show where we just look at all the weird stuff that's out there on the internet. And just as a reference for you, as a viewer, if you're on YouTube, some of these, for various reasons, may be blurred out. And it kind of leaves it up to your imagination and how well I can explain what the hell is going on. But... They are all available. Every single link, every single video, unadulterated, unedited, are found. Swayunlimited.com slash blog. Every single episode has show notes, and you can just peruse through and take a look, uh, and most definitely just looking at the show notes here. There's one of them that is going to be blurred out, but again, if you, if you need to see it, swayunlimited.com slash blog. First clip here, let's uh, take some look -sies. Oh, yeah. So uh, at, at a ball game, at a baseball game somewhere, somewhere in America, 
And this uh, gentleman behind the uh, the woman that's in frame is uh, getting a nice little ballpark over the pants hand action. And of course, the couple, the two people that took the video, you know, it's like that sly movement of like, you know, hey, hey, hey there's some weird shit going on behind you here. Hold on, hold on. I'm just going to just act normal. Oh, my God. That guy's getting a handy. Uh, it's, can't tell just by the looks of it. It's at a ball game. It's at a stadium. But it kind of seems like what the Mariners were getting. I know we're not in the deep shot in sports yet, but they were getting a little bit of over the pants hand job action in that postseason run. Uh, but a uh, bold move. Sly, right? I mean, you'd have to look over and down and be like, sir. She's touching your willy. But that's exactly what happened. Uh, Movie theaters, right? I mean, there's so many places that you can perform sexual acts. And while I don't condone public, public sexual acts, this seems to be in the passing territory. Because one, the stands aren't packed. Uh, You could see here on the side, like there's an entire section of the grandstands that no one is in. Uh, The other concern, probably the most important concern is, well, parents like to bring their children to sporting events. And so, yeah, don't subject them to that. That could be scarring. Uh, I don't see any kids. Uh, I just see adults here. Maybe it's an adult. It was couples night at the at the ballpark. Sell some tickets. But it's America's pastime. And when you're trying to pass time, why not get your dick tugged on a little bit? Moving on here, next clip. We have a woman using a a, a broom to fight a rat, and the rat is going after her in such a way that I have not seen before. Oh, my God, rats jumping. There, This woman's in a pit. I mean, this is almost like the octagon where I need to face 75 naked peanut butter covered men. Uh, yeah, this is, I don't know how she got in the pit. Oh, she tried to get out. She brought the guy in with him. Guy says, fuck that. I'm out. Oh, this is an aggressive rat. And, and she's just, just hanging on now referencing back. And I feel like I do it every couple of weeks, episode 14, I believe of this program, uh, animal kingdom is the title. I might be off by an episode number or two. But one of the stories in there that I just keep calling back to is the percentage of Americans who think they can take on whatever animal. It started out with a rat. And that rat, I think 84% of Americans think, oh, yeah, I could, I could take on a, a rat hand-to-hand combat. After seeing this in a, in a pit of despair with this rat, Uh, Even with a broom like this lady's struggling now, she's kind of setting herself up to struggle more because she has a broom and she's using the handle end to try and smack the rat when you have a much larger surface area with the actual broom part of the broom. But she's swinging at it. And I mean, this rat is no survivors. Oh, it gets clocked once, but it's just coming. It's a big rat, too. She's just trying to sweep it away, but there is no place to go. And she's just, I mean, she's just focused on self-defense. And then rat goes into a corner cigar and I'm ready to get out. Hoist, she pulls too much of her weight. The guy falls in. The guy's like, yeah, no, this is your, this is your circus. No, thank you. Uh, And she doesn't get out. And she, I mean, she looks winded out of breath. So this might be the, what is that? 16% that don't think they can take on a rat. I I don't know if that number goes down. If you actually put yourself in a shallow concrete pit, a little rectangle, it's not an octagon. It's only got four sides, but a little rectangle and see, all right, here's a ravenous rat and here's a broom. Let's see what you can do. And she's wearing like little uh, flats too. So she can't just curb stomp it. And for those who are listening, the rat is at least two times bigger than her foot. So She'd have to be precise with her, boom, curb stomp. Moving on, more in the animal kingdom. These videos show the crazy confrontations between bears and people. 
inside this Kings Beach gas station convenience store over the past three weeks. This one so this is a convenience period, store that Joseph bears bear just waltz into. And no money. This video shows a bear inside this just being a bear. Self, that's their payment. By a customer swatting the bear's backside. And this video from August 29th shows an employee oh. trying to prevent a bear from entering the store until the bear makes a quick move forward, lunging at the employee who quickly backs away. That yeah, that uh, how much do you care about your job working at a convenience store? A little stop and rob because uh, he's standing here. This bear. I mean, these are big bears. These look like I'm no bearologist, but uh, of the grizzly kind, perhaps. I'm going to guess this is. I don't know, somewhere in Canada. What does it say? I don't know. But uh, these are large bears. And this guy is just standing near the door. Bear is poking its head in. And he's like, sir, no shoes, no shirt. I, I can't serve you. And this video from August 29th shows. An and he's kind of stepping, trying to trying to place his body and life in between a bear and some Snickers. Uh, I don't think that's worth it. From entering this door until the go on, go get on, get then the bear. All the bear has to do. It does like a little lunge here. Like I'm hungry. All the bear has to do is just commit a little bit more. And now the Snickers turns into a human leg uh, and a lot, <laughs> a lot shittier to deal with as a, as a convenience store clerk quickly backs away that employee is paul high it was kind of scary yeah i'm not not gonna lie i says this uh not gonna lie it was just kind of scary that is absolutely terrifying i i'd be out i i have through this show and then just uh, exposure to the internet and then just understanding what bears actually are i'm absolutely terrified of these animals he's like oh, i'm not gonna lie it was kind of scary yeah is not what he signed up for not in the job description no not at all fighting off bears was not in the job description what did imagine the applicants you would get if you did put that in the job description if this guy leaves his job he's like i can't do any more of these bears are driving me fucking nuts and then they put out a new ad overnight convenience store clerk help wanted will need to fight bears or experience with fighting bears. And then you get these Steve Irwin wannabes that come in or just like trigger happy ones. Be like, I'll come work for you. but need to have my shotgun under that counter. I'm not worried about getting robbed. They can take the money. But if a bear comes in, I'm going to fuck that thing up nice. It is now. It is now, apparently, yeah. And it's not only at the gas station store. This video shows a bear inside a Safeway supermarket. It's one of the same bears that has become a frequent customer inside Kings Beach businesses. And Brian I'm going to just, I need to, I need to know where this is so I can know where to avoid going into, this is California? Lake Tahoe? Oh, yeah. I thought this was Canada. No, this is right on Lake Tahoe. This is like, oh, this is civilization. This isn't out like some random convenience store out in the middle of where the fuck are we Alaska or up in the the Cana the Cananadas this is Lake Tahoe and they're just like oh, it's a it's a our daily lives we just deal with a lot of bears Ryan, with the bear league has reached out to both the gas station and the grocery store about how to prevent more of these interactions so I don't know if you caught that. They reached out to a member of the Bear League. To both the gas station. I'm going to I'm going to scrub back here. Bears that has become a frequent customer inside Kings Beach businesses. And Bryant with the Bear League has reached out to both the, the gas the station Bear League and the grocery store. Reached out and it's like, hey, I am a member of the Bear League. And I have some suggestions on how you can prevent bears entering your businesses. Um, lock the fucking door. Uninstall that sliding motion detected bullshit. Just go for handles. And then if you see a bear coming, I mean, bears, if they're not on the hunt running 35 miles an hour, however fast they are, 
you see a bear coming across the parking lot, like, oh, we got another bear. All right, we're going on a, a lockdown. You just take a a broom or a rod and just push it through the handles and be like, not today, bear. How to prevent more of these interactions. Problem solved. The bear should not be going into buildings where there's people. <laughs> uh, the bear league, I mean, they they have their shit down. I mean, they they know they know where bears should be. Uh, and it, it takes an expert to know that they don't belong in convenience stores. And someone could kill him or shoot him or the Department of Wildlife could kill him. Wild encounter. That's true. I'm terrified of bears, but uh, they, they shouldn't have to die for just wanting a little snacky. They just don't have any money. Captured on video. Oh, they're definitely smart. Bold bears making for risky business. Ooh, there's that, that sign off. Yeah, uh, uh, bears... You just have to yield to them. There are only a few animals that you have to yield to in this animal kingdom. Bears are definitely one of them. The other one are big, scary mountain cougars. Take a look at this. Say mountain cougar Get back. on an approach to this guy who's holding the camera. He has his gun drawn. And that mountain cougar is not backing down. Uh, it is just approaching like, I'm going to eat you. And, I mean, I don't think the cat knows what a gun is. Is he still, you know, pointing it at him? <sighs> Breathing heavy, as I would be. Again, nature, scary as fuck. cat kind of turns sideways you know when like a, a house cat kind of does the the, sh the shriek got the spine up and then they have their front paws and their back paws pretty much kind of aligned because they're appearing bigger that they are this is a fucking what a 300 pound mountain cougar doing that and oh it made the jump warning shot was fired but it was it oh my god it just started to pounce on the guy And just nonchalantly, two warning shots, and then it's like, oh, okay, the thing that uh, you were waving, that black metal thing. Okay, I get it. And the cat is hopefully gone. No, it's still hanging out. Oh. Well, I think the guy made it, but this is why anytime I go out into the wilderness, I bring the gat with me because I... You don't want to be shit up a creek without a paddle and a gun when nature's most formidable predators get hungry. Uh, it's, oh, it's so scary. I, I would rather deal with a, a human interaction of similar tenseness than these big animals. Because no one, oh God, it'd be so shitty to die like that. Hard pass, very hard pass. Uh, okay, moving on to rounding out this segment of the Scrub My Clip, we're going to ch take a look at this moist clip. This next clip mm, is so moist. And we have a Wells Fargo ATM with a naked lady. And, and not the, this isn't influencers in the wild. They're not like taking like uh, sexy pics in front of the ATM. Like I got money. No, this is a typical middle-aged woman body with no clothes on. But here's where it gets tricky. There's a mask. So at least, you know, there's that protection. They were that considerate. Bring me all wheels, Fargo. <laughs> And she's at the drive through ATM, not in a car and not in clothes. Yes, sir. And then she, I don't know, she, I don't even think she gets her money at the end of this. Bring me all wheels, ASAP. Bring me all wheels, Fargo. <laughs> yes, sir. And then she kind of runs away. Maybe it was for, I don't know if someone's taking a video. This was like a extreme game of truth or dare. But watching this now and paralleling that to the 
question from the call earlier. This is not a 75 year old woman, uh, but still I, it's, it's inevitable with time that your body is going to deteriorate and you're not going to look how you look or looked in your twenties forever. So I'm just thinking this visual, I, I didn't really consider like how I know I'm backtracking here, but I didn't consider like how intimidating a naked 75 year old body would be. This is like, I'm going to take a wild guess and put her at like 43. That's what a 43 year old naked body looks like. 75. Uh, that might be actually something that I need to to consider. I'm, I'm, I'm backtracking a little bit, but it's a moist one to get all your clothes off. There's no peanut butter in this though. Uh, but trying to get that bread, if you know what I mean, uh, at the ATM with no clothes on. Okay, moving on in the show, our next segment is taking a look at the news. Yeah, what's the big deal, fella? It's just a little bit of news. First story. Fossil fuel protesters throw tomato soup on Van Gogh's sunflowers in London Gallery. Anti-fossil fuel protesters threw soup, as I just said, over Vincent Van Gogh's famous 19, 1888 painting, Sunflowers, at London's National Gallery this last week. Two young women from the campaign group Just Stop Oil threw the contents of two tins of Heinz tomato soup over the painting, which the group said is an estimated value of $84.2 million dollars for some Van Gogh paintings, and they just put soup all over it. They then glued themselves to the wall beneath the painting. Instead of a, a, a soup and dash, they splattered that shit and then got down. It's like, we're the ones who did it. Just stop oil. I, I am no art connoisseur. If you were to tell me, if I were to go to London's National Gallery and be looking at Van Gogh's sunflowers and you didn't tell me that it was Van Gogh and I just saw it I'm like, Oh, okay. Like that's, that's artful. Sure. And then someone comes by and it's like, you know, this is worth $84.2 million. I'm like, no, I, you know what have fooled me? Maybe my thought is, and there's a video here. Let's take a look at this. But my thought is, is that maybe they found out that this painting is an oil painting and Maybe the assumption of just stop oil has nothing to do with like the oil industry for industrial means. It's just just stop oil paintings. This group just really hates that medium for art. They're paint purists. Uh, they're uh, other mediums of art, but not oil. Fuck oil paintings and fuck you, Van Gogh, for doing it uh, 200 years ago or 100 years ago. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at this video it actually shows them. Here's the painting before I run it. Uh, yeah, that is appropriate name for Van Gogh sunflowers. Those are some sunflowers. And they just, oh, and then they get down. That's probably the best part of the video is you get the reaction to because people that obviously work at the National Gallery in London, people that are frequenting it, enjoying the art, they know more than I. So when that soup goes kersplat, uh, the people that you can hear off camera are a little taken aback. They're like, no, not sunflowers. Ha! Huh. And then when they, as they're getting down on the ground to grab the glue, to glue themselves to the ground beneath the painting, you hear this. Security. In a slightly panicked, but uh, kind of quivering, like with a little bit of authority. Security. Sunflowers has been defiled. Please save the painting. Security. Security. <laughs> like, it just sounds like it's a little bit further away from when the video was taken that he's just kind of standing at like the entryway of this part of the gallery. 
and he's watching, and then he just turns his head. Security! Help! <laughs> then the remainder of the video, I mean, they're not, they're not saying anything as soup is dripping off of an $84.2 million painting. They just get the glue out frantically. They're like, fuck, 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 glue. Okay, it's on my hands. And then they, they put it down and like, stop oil. Fuck oil paintings. We hate this shit. Uh, more on the story. Uh, this was a, a quote from the gallery. Uh, there was some minor damage to the frame, but the painting is unharmed. The gallery explained that the painting was glazed, probably with an oil-based protectant, and it was protected. So all for naught, these protesters have now pissed off a lot of people that understand what sunflowers is and what it means. I, I know Vincent Van Gogh, but again, I am no artist connoisseur. I have, uh, it's not on camera, but I have uh, the, the bold and brash from SpongeBob, that abstract painting of Squidward hanging up on my wall. That is the only bit of art that I own. And guess what? It cost me like $15 on Amazon. So I'm not the person to weigh in and be like, this is an attack on Van Gogh's life and portfolio. And, and it's just absurd. Uh, my references are not there. But I do like to think that it's the Just Stop Oil. It's not petroleum. It's oil paintings. Because they must have been really pissed at that painting to throw Heinz tomato soup all over that bitch. Uh, but then to find out, like, here's the thing. These galleries, anything where there's a, a, a public area, you buy the ticket. You walk around, you do reconnaissance. This is a rookie flub up where they're like, we're just going to do it in and out because I can't stand being in a room with not just one oil painting, but multiples. It makes me sick. And if I go in there to scout it out, I, I I'm going to lose it. If I see once I see those oil paintings, I'm, I'm going to go for the soup. I, I can't, I just stop oil. All you had to do, unless your hatred for oil paintings is that severe, all you have to do is go on a tour, tour guide. And here is Vincent van Gogh's famous 1888 painting of sunflowers made in oil. And they're in the recon group, just fuck, fucking oil paintings. Um, I have a question, not about the oil, but you would think... <sighs> That some time has passed since this oil painting was made. Has the National Gallery made any sort of steps to protect it? Oh, yes, of course. Um, we've taken a glaze, an oil-based glaze. Mm -hmm. And we've protected the painting. And then they leave and they mean tweet about fuck oil. And then they don't go back because they're just, they're going to jail for nothing. Maybe in some way they have achieved the publicity. It's, I mean, it was an act of protest and they're like, oh, okay, just stop oil. And maybe the, the train, the group of people that are like, yeah, fuck oil paintings, fuck that shit. And then they're going to, you know, they might get some good publicity out of this. But $84.2 million painting is safe and sound. Still made of oil, you fuckers. Next story. Woman scammed by Russian astronaut, and that's in quotations, Russian astronaut, who claimed he needed money to return to Earth. The man found a 65-year-old unnamed victim on Instagram in June. On his profile, he uploaded random photos of space and said he worked on the International Space Station, where astronauts have limited access to cell service. Uh, this is uh, out of this world, literally, catfishing. Because, again, like, people, uh, 
65 year old victim is a little bit older in 10 more years. They'll get naked and get covered in peanut butter and get the shit kicked out of them. But the younger people, anyone under the age of, I would say 40 at this point, you shouldn't be getting catfished. But at 65 years old, oh, he's an astronaut and he doesn't have cell service, which makes sense. He says that the cell towers can only be mounted onto the ground and that the the 5G waves that go through the birds, they can't reach the space station. So I have to have chat with him on Instagram. He's on space internet, I guess. The relationship quickly escalated online, a Japanese messaging app. He repeatedly said he loved her and proposed marriage. He sent her messages like, I want to start my life in Japan. And saying this a thousand times won't be enough, but I'll keep saying it. I love you. But in, but to actually tie the knot, he said he needed money to return to Earth. There were landing fees to pay once in Japan and the cost of a rocket to actually fly to the country, he said. Believing this man would be her fee, future fiance, the woman paid him about 4.4 million yen, which is about $30,000 USD, in five different installments from August 19th to September 5th. So they meet on Instagram in June. Hello, baby. I am Russian astronaut up in space. How are you doing? And then by August, late August, this Russian astronaut had convinced this woman to send 30 grand. Like, there's a problem with international space station goes around Earth. I see your house every 90 minutes or so. We pass around Earth. I see Japan and I, I, I picture a life with you down there. But the problem is I talk to people here on station. They say it's very expensive to launch rocket out sitting over Japan and send down to you. And I ask them, well, how much? How much to see my love? And they say about $30,000. A small price to pay for the rest of our lives and happiness. Uh, the one thing I am a little upset on, it just it had some quotes from the messages like, I want to start my life in Japan and saying this a thousand times won't be enough, but I'll keep saying it. I love you. If you really wanted to sell the whole charade, you'd, you'd use some space faring cheesy puns and pickup lines like, baby, out here among these stars, I know that you're my star, my only star. Like something corny like that. You could have got maybe another $30,000 out of it. Um, but uh, basically, she found out that she was duped. There isn't a Russian astronaut who needs to return to Earth from space <laughs> by the help of $30,000. And it was reported to uh, basically like a gotcha division in Japan. It was reported Hey, there's a scammer. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> you can't really do anything about it. Maybe just ask for a FaceTime call and be like, I want to see the space station. But like, no, no, cell service not good enough for that. I take posts from NASA and share with you. Just do not search for it. That was actually me. I took photograph. Uh, yeah, don't be don't be getting catfished if you're under 40. Uh, over six, I mean, this woman was 65. I, I feel for her. Uh, that sucks. But also understand that $30,000 to land a rocket. Uh, it's a little low. All right, let's uh, check out some wild news. Oh, dude, that's some wild news. Manhattan congressional candidate publishes a porn video to highlight his sex positive platform. Third party congressional candidate Mike Itkiss has released a sex tape to highlight his sex positive campaign platform. The 53-year-old Army Cyber Operations Officer is bound to lose to Republican or Representative. I always get confused when I'm reading political jargon. Rep, period. Is that Representative, the Congressional District, or is that Republican? I don't know art. I don't know politics. I just know that this is some wild news. Uh, Rep, Jerry Nadler, he's set to lose to them in Manhattan's 12th Congressional District, but he posted a 13-minute video to a popular online porn site, a, a hub of sorts, if, you, if you're wondering, of him having sex with a porn performer, Nicole Sage, as a conversation piece. 
yes, there is a video out there. And yes, for you, I did some research to see if it exists. Uh, it's actually pretty easy to find. Uh, the guy's name is Mike Itkiss. That's all you got to search. If you want to see someone who's running for a political position in Manhattan, want to see him have sex as a conversation piece, by all means, you're more than welcome to. Uh, this was a quote from him. Uh, if I would just talk about it, it wouldn't demonstrate my commitment to the issue. And the fact that I actually did it was a huge learning experience and it actually influenced items on my platform. His issues include legalizing sex work and making sexual rights explicit. Do not rely on privacy or free speech rights, his campaign site reads, where sex positive Positivity is one of just three campaign issues in all of Manhattan, the Big Apple, New York City, which are all thin on details. So that's that's what he's running on. Sex positivity. Vote for me. And if you need to make up your mind, well, here's a video of me having sex with a woman. Uh, it kiss who bios whose bio, pardon me, identifies himself as not married, no kids, not celibate. Atheist also seems to take aim at child support payments, writing that men should not be required to support biological children without prior agreement. I think that prior agreement in all cases is similar to what you recorded on video. When you agree to dump your load in a fertile woman, that's your agreement. If that turns out to be a kid and then you're like, oh, this isn't going to work. Like I'm a politician. You're a porn star. Like I'm, I'm just not going to pay child support. Like I didn't, I didn't want it. That's not how that works. Ickes said in the video, here's the title too. bucket list bonanza. It's the name of the video. In 2021, it was his first time having sex on camera and insisted he's not an exhibitionist. I'm very much an introvert, introvert and very liberal registered Democrat. He said, I'm kind of a nerd who doesn't like to be the center of attention if I can avoid it. But if you could watch me having sex with a sex worker for your vote, then I want to be that center of attention because I want to represent you. You should be allowed to have sex for payment with any woman who agrees to it. And if there's a slip up and you keep it in a little bit too long and she gets pregnant on my campaign and my promise, you will not have to pay for it. I might get kissed and I approve this message. Uh, continuing the quote, uh, but I thought the issues I'm trying to address are so important. I wanted to have my issues talked about in some way. I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's creative. I will give him that. Um, I, I think politics, and I'm just going to dabble in this just for a minute. I think politics are moving towards the scandals are getting more salacious and they're also getting more true. And who knows, this could be a snowball effect where this is just, <clears throat> excuse me, the 12th congressional district in Manhattan, but in the next election, in five elections from now, like the presidential ones, in 10, who knows? We could have a presidential candidate that's like, do you feel like you're getting fucked by the government? Well, watch me fuck a woman to get your vote. And I mean, who knows? Stranger things have happened in politics to get people elected. So, um... Who knows? Mike Akis, we might be looking back at you as a political pioneer of do what you believe in no matter what. And get your dick wet at the same time. OK, that does it for the news. Let's just take a, uh, a quick break here and uh, just consider the world that we live in. If you want to have sex for money, that's part of capitalism. We need a dose of capitalism. It's time for a dose of capitalism. Live, buy, consume, die. And just as a little friendly reminder, uh, if you took a few weeks off from the show, all the Amazon stuff, uh, it, it's done. Don't, there's, there's no more Amazon promotion. Amazon 
basically kicked me off. They're like, hey, that what you're doing is not right. You can't be a Amazon associate partner anymore. So shop on Amazon as you will. There's no way to split commissions 50-50. Hey, life's about taking shots. Um, but as I do every week, I do want to give a shout out to the supporters of this show that have, have given money. If you're listening and watching, you are already a supporter. But the ones that actually pay to have their name said on a weekly basis, well, here they are. Shout out to AJ Joe, Michael Davis, Reverend Tanner Mills, Quinn, and Tyla. Thank you so much for your support. Gentlemen, if you want to help support the show, throw some money the show's way. Everything, every single penny goes into improving the show. And actually, if you are watching on YouTube, lean back here a bit. You see this little thing with the light stuff? Well, now there's two of them. I won't get into the technicals of what they do, but that's from support. That's from help. That's we're improving things. We're expanding the parade and you can do that. Swayunlimited.com slash pricing. I teased it last week. Um, I'll tease it a little bit more, probably within the next three, four weeks. There's going to be a Patreon. Uh, a little bit easier to sign up. Pricing won't be as absurd. You go to swayunlimited.com slash pricing. You see $6.90 and then there's one for $532 or $72, whatever it is. It'll be a lot more simple. So head there. There's also a, a donate. The show's got a PayPal. It's got a Venmo. There's all that stuff. So if, if you're really feeling frisky with your wallet and want to throw some dollars here, I mean, we live, we buy, we consume and we die. It's all about capitalism, baby. Um, send it the show's way. I will be eternally grateful. All righty. Well, that does it for the capitalism. Uh, keep living, keep buying, keep consuming and yeah, keep dying. Now, Let's round out the show with some sports in the deep shot. Guns are strong! Look at that big old belly. Chuck, you're getting me restless. The deep shot. Okay, sports segment of the show. It's kind of weird just how it comes together. Uh, if you are following the NFL this season, uh, just be aware that there is a delay. Uh... Most games are played on Sundays. The show comes out on Tuesday. The show is typically recorded on Saturday. So going into this week, all these matchups, uh, I'm just covering what happened the previous week because those events have not happened yet in this timeline. Uh, I do want to mention super quick too, in the show notes, wherever you're listening, in the YouTube, the video description, there is the $100 deep shot pick Pick pot, pickums, it's pickums. You can still join. You don't, unless everyone in the group right now collectively shits the bed. You can't, you're kind of out of the running for the hundred dollar grand prize at the end of the season. But every single week, whoever has the top pick, you get paid on whatever the prize is, whatever week it is. I think we're going into week seven, six or seven, eight five, wherever we're at, say it's week six. If you win the week, you get six bucks. If you do it again in week seven, you get seven bucks. So the stakes are getting a little bit higher. So you can still join, still have that opportunity to win some scratch. The, the link to the group, as I said, is in the description in the show notes, the password all under case, Josh is daddy 17. Of course, I'm referring to Josh Allen. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the deep shot here. If I can, here we go. So the, the first story, this was from the, the Monday night game last week, Devonte Adams of the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, he was a little upset. His team, the Raiders played the chiefs ended up losing on kind of a, a fluke play. He was running the field. His teammate came, ran into him. They both fell down. The ball fell to the ground. That's the game. Game over. The dude was pissed. And he was so pissed that as he was walking to the locker room, he shoves down a photographer or production assistant, whatever. He's holding like a camera or like a C stand or something. He's in his path, just shoves him. I mean, props on him. He didn't fumble it. 
what he was holding, the C-stand. Uh, but he fell to the ground, and Devonta Adams just keeps walking. He's like, get the fuck out of my way. Well, sometimes emotions get the best of you. Uh, the best of anyone, really. And if you are a professional athlete that competes day in and day out, that's what you do. And you lose a game where it wasn't that you got bested by the opposition. You got bested by your teammate. Hunter Renfro fucked up big time. Uh, he was pissed. He took it out on this poor guy. Guy didn't deserve it. Uh, but what has developed since the happenings on that Monday night is Devonta Adams has been charged with a misdemeanor for assault for shoving a credentialed media worker after Monday night's loss to Kansas City uh, in Kansas City. So, I mean, this is a, a rival team. They're in the same division. Uh, he might have a little target on his head, at least for the photographers. You usually see it on the field, uh, especially in the rivalry games where they teams play each other multiple times a year, where if there's an act done in the first game and it is viewed unfavorable, they usually try to tag you back. Now, it's not directly with the Chiefs, but maybe the, the media workers at the Chiefs stadium uh, maybe they'll make the trip out to Las Vegas and uh, I don't know, like photograph him picking his nose and publishing. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to retaliate. Um, but Devonte Adams was cited for an intentional overt act that inflicted bodily injury, according to court records released Wednesday. The man shoved by Adams, identified by police as Ryan Zebley, suffered whiplash, a headache, and possible minor concussion from the incident. Oh. It's going into concussion protocols for the uh, NFL media, whatever that may be. Uh, Zebley was working for ESPN's Monday Night Football as a freelance photographer. If convicted, Devonta Adams could face a jail term of up to six months and a fine or a fine, pardon me, or a fine of up to $1,000. Now, the reality of it at this point that I'm reading this, the NFL hasn't come out and said, well, this is going to cost you a little bit more than $1,000. That's not how you should be conducting yourself as one of our players in our league. So he's going to be paying definitely more than $1,000. He is, uh, if he goes to jail, it's remained to be seen, but he is going to be in football jail for a little bit because he's not going to be playing at least for one game because uh, of this oopsie, oopsie, no, no. Um, the shove, right? Put yourself in Ryan's shoes, the the media worker. Uh, the shove, I mean, it was completely unprovoked. He's just walking. There's two sides to the argument here that, well, he shouldn't have been walking in front of Devontae Adams, uh, so he deserved it. Or the other side, you shouldn't have shoved him. I don't care how angry you are from losing. Uh, but the shove there, I mean, I don't see I don't see a head injury, uh, concussion-like symptoms. Uh, I'm no doctor. Um, but a fall down, you know, scrapes, uh, bruises. He said he's a whiplash, though. I mean, hold on. Those C-stands can be heavy. Um, I don't know. I think I think he's more fine than what the reports are suggesting of whiplash, all that. But, I mean, maybe. And maybe the whiplash and the headache and the possible minor concussion could lead to him not being able to photograph for the NFL anymore. And then you're now doing a civil suit to be like, hey, you took my my job away from me, my livelihood. I'm suing you for uh, how much is Devonta Adams worth? How much is his contract? Because that's whatever it is. I'm not going to look it up. But whatever it is, uh, it's going to be at that. Be like, hey, this guy has money. I've seen the commercials. This man literally has a Taco Bell in his house. I either want exclusive, unrestricted access to that house Taco Bell that you have, Mr. Adams, or I need you to pay me, I don't know, $80 million. I think that might, you know, make up for the whiplash and that everything else. So the choice is yours. Lawyer the fuck up. I'm right, moving on, staying in the NFL. This clip went viral. This is uh, the Giants, the New York Giants player, Darnay Holmes. On the sideline, this was in the London game against the Packers. With pants partially down, fucking big ol' ass cheeks, uh, getting something rubbed out. You see here, 
the angle of the camera in which this video was taken, uh, it looks like he's just getting a quick, I mean, just like at the baseball game. Now we're, uh, there's layers of sports here. Now we're playing American football at a British football arena. And he's just getting a, a tugger on. I mean, that, that really is like, it's from viewing it. It looks like the trainer is just giving it the, what is this? Like the mill? What would you call this? This type of jerking motion. It's like the, you know, those oil pumps that go up and down all throughout fields in Texas. And, but that's how he's being jerked off. That's what it looks like. Um, you got a, a coach here, someone that comes by and that comes up. Feels good, right? Feels good. I taught him that we do that in the locker room. That's the, the oil pump. So of course, I mean, I wouldn't put it completely out of the realm of possibilities, but of course he wasn't getting an oil pump rig hand job jerk off. Uh, but the man capitalized on it, uh, in this tweet here, he says, y'all need to chill. The tent wasn't available, which I still don't know why we're chilling. Cause it's like, oh, so you're saying you still would have gotten an oil rig hand job, uh, if the medical tent was available. Nonetheless, it wasn't available. Uh, everyone's having so much fun with this vid. So I decided to team up with Memento NFT and turn it into an NFT. Got to give some Got to give away some signed balls and do some live streams too. Which balls are being signed, Mister Holmes? We don't know, but uh, I, I think the uh, I'm pretty sure. I don't know art in the physical form with oil, and I sure as shit don't know the digital art of it as well. The NFTs um, are they still around? Are they still relevant? Either way, he's trying to capitalize on a on a funny moment. But also at the same time, uh, the legalities of it, it's not his videos. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how it works, but the the guy's, you know, trying to have some fun with it and also capitalize on just making more money. Uh, but yeah, there's a, um, a potential new thing to try uh, with yourself or with a, a loved one or just a stranger. It really doesn't matter as long as there's consent and you're willing to pay child support payments if something happens and a baby is made but yeah the the oil rig jerk off no oh, maybe it's a it's it's a it's a new position try it out okay uh moving on to the next clip here uh so i, I did take a uh, a little bit of a shot at the mariners uh they're in the postseason it's cool they're playing against the astros the astros are a better team i'm uh, just kind of discrediting myself in so many ways. I don't really know art. I don't know digital art. Uh, what was the other thing I don't really know? I don't know a lot of things. I don't really know baseball either, but I do know a good bit of sports commentary when I hear, and you're going to hear it too. Take a listen. Man, the curveball has some serious dick to it right now. Man, the curveball has some serious dick to it right now. Yep, you heard that right. The curveball has some serious dick to it right now. It's like he's trying to say, I don't know, probably should be saying it directly to his his partner, um, but he's just saying it to the world. He's like, a little curve is okay. It's still a serious dick. Uh, I don't really know if this is a, uh, a common term um, in, in Major League Baseball booths. Man, the curveball has some serious dick to it right now. Serious dick. That dick's got some serious curve. Uh, the curve has some serious uh, 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 two strikes. Uh, that's a strikeout for Valdez. Bottom of the top of the top of the second. And, and you know, partner, uh, curves aren't so bad out there on the mound and also down there in my pants. Uh, more commentary. Uh, fun stuff here. Nothing in two. Swing and a foul right back to the screen to stay alive. This is uh, minor league baseball. And that is our first uh, <laughs> our first beer victim or, or beverage victim. So foul ball gets that tipped foul ball. in this ballpark because it's the minor leagues. I guess they didn't want to pay for a, a net behind home plate. So the ball comes back and 
perfectly hits this guy's can and just at the angle. I mean, this is a one in a million. This is like the Randy Johnson hitting the bird as he pitched. Just hit the can so it protects the body and then just showers in beer. Ball took off a drink oh, that was on all that foam. One more time. Two. Swing and a foul right back Boom. in the screen to stay alive. Perfect. And that is our He's first, laughing. Uh, he's, he's having a... That's fun. He got lucky. He could have had an eye taken out. Uh, but no, he just had his beer. And uh, the commentator kind of missed an opportunity because, as you can see here, Bud Light Seltzer is the sponsor right next to where this guy is sitting. So the commentator said, oh, we have our first beer. Pardon me. We have our first Bud Light Seltzer incident out there with the fan getting hit by the wild ball. And who doesn't enjoy a tasty Bud Light Seltzer? The official drink of the Minor League Baseball Association League. And uh, we'll we'll make sure that uh, this guy here gets gets another tasty Bud Light Seltzer because nothing's worse than spilling a drink, but nothing's really as worse than spilling a tasty Bud Light Seltzer. Cardinals up 2-1. We'll be right back. All right. Now, the end of the segment on the deep shot and almost the end of the show here is we got to get country. Long. Country strong, play the week. And we got a special one. Oh. We got a special one this week. But as it always is, I can't start the country strong. I can't do it really unless I have this here country strong hat. So I'm gonna off. Off the regular hat and suit up as Country Strong Cloud. Welcome to this week's edition of Country Strong Play of the Week. Thank you for joining me. This is about to be a fun time. Uh, the clips on here, what is Country Strong? You might be asking. And I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a, a thunder away from Chuck's. It's kind of, this is my time to silence. Here's Country Strong. And also I get to pray to the almighty algorithm after it. So I'm really excited about it. But Country Strong, I mean, really, it's it's kind of like the Supreme Court said way back when. I can't tell you what porn is, but I know it when I see it. And the same goes for Country Strong. I can't exactly tell you what Country Strong is, but I know it when I see it. And I think you should as well. Let's take a look here at the clip that is Country Strong. And these are mooses. Mooses that are fighting out in someone's front yard. Just, they, they got their pickup truck and their SUV. Normal day, you just go and park in the driveway, go inside, go enjoy your house. We didn't expect to see two big old mooses just duking it out. I mean, the moose is a size, half the size of the truck. All oh, these moose are going at it, throwing them antlers down. And they don't care. Oh, the moose gets in country strong, gets in the back of the truck. Daughter moose is stuck, but the fight ain't over. Oh, but the, the, they still, daughter moose getting out of the truck now. I realize it's not a good place to be. I'm going to tell you here, with it, this moose hopping in, I mean, I think the one that jumped in was like, this This other moose is too damn country strong. I can't take it no more. Oh, I got to get out of here. Jumps in the back. Now, this is... I guess the rule of moose fighting in nature when it's country strong is if your opponent is is inundated by some other means that aren't your big old moose horns, I guess you have to give it a courtesy to stop. Because the moose tries to jump in and halfway in the truck, big old country strong truck, what is that, Chevy or something? The other moose, they were just bumping moose heads. The other moose kind of stops and be like, go on, get yourself, sit back up again, and we'll keep going. And that there's a moosely gentleman. The other one's just confused. It's like, how did I get here? I will just, I might have banged my head a bit too hard. Kind of backs up. Look, look, the, the other moose is like, you're almost out. All right, let's start again. I'm going to put my, my horns down. 
And then that that's kind of it. Now, moose, from what I've heard, are, are pretty dangerous. And when you have two of them just duking it out, that's not a fight you want to break up. Because they are, they are just going at it. Country strong style, bumping the SUV. It's getting in. I mean, it looks like this one bowl is a lot more stronger, more depth for fighting than the other one. And uh, there's plastic flying. There's it all. That there. That there is country strong. Oh, my goodness. Moose. Who would have thought? And after watching that, I told you. I can't tell you what country strong is, but you just know it when you see it. Okay, okay. Let's roll out this show. Play the rest out. Uh, we, you and I, get to pray to the almighty algorithm. And I'll put this out here, too, because we did have the call this week. If you want to give your own praise to the algorithm and you want to pray instead of me or Chuck, or it's just the two of us here, if you want to do the weekly pray to the almighty algorithm, you are more than welcome to. I'm going to put this up here, 818-275-SWAY. Call it up and say your prayers. Because here's the thing. This ain't like the good Lord where you just quiet and then, dear Lord, here's what I'm praying to. I don't even have to say it out loud. With Jesus, with Buddha, with all the, the other deities out there, you can just do it. You can think it. And, and they'll hear you. The almighty algorithm's different. It needs recordings. <laughs> Excuse me. The almighty algorithm needs recordings. There needs to be a digital footprint of what you are saying so the almighty algorithm can take it in and, and put it in and spread its joy throughout the world, throughout the metaverse, throughout the universe. So if you want to pray to the almighty algorithm, 818 sway I'll throw that number up one more time. Call it up, say your prayers. And also, actually I should say, because these calls are, are not monitored until it's recorded, shoot a message on the social media. <laughs> Excuse me. Shoot a message to Chuck on the social media, at Chuck underscore Sway, whatever platform, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, uh, 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 TikTok, you know, all those. Shoot that out there and uh, and let them, hey, I just gave a call. Here's the last four digits of my cellular number. Uh, that's a prey to the algorithm. And then that'll be put aside. And then when we get to this point right here where we pray, we'll give you the floor. So if you want to pray to the almighty algorithm, it's wide open. But, I mean, the only one is doing right now is me, and I love it when I get to do it. So bow your heads if you can right now, because we're praying to the almighty algorithm. Oh, almighty algorithm. This is for you. Everything that I do, you sent us those two moose duking it out by the truck. You sent us a story of the congressperson having sex on camera for votes. You send us everything. And we are grateful with everything that we have on my algorithm. You provide and we reprovide and you sort and you send. And we say, amen. Well, that about done did do it here for this way brain on this week. Just a final, one final shout out before we get out of here. I want to give another shout out to Andrew Joe, Michael Davis, Reverend Tanner Mills, Quinn, and Tyler. They paid to have their name said not once, but twice on the show. Uh, that's going to do it, though. Thank you so much for watching and listening uh, we'll be back in a week's time with more Parade. Yeah!